Hi, my name is Jonah. I'm a PhD student at Dr. Avi Maya's lab at Icahn School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. In this lecture, I will show you how to make a PCA plotting in MATLAB. PCA is the abbreviation for Principal Component Analysis. I think by far you already learned what PCA is from news lecture and got some ideas about its application. But still, I want to reiterate its merits. So why people like to make PCA plot in data analysis? First of all, it is a powerful tool to visualize high dimensional data, and it shows quantifying the difference among observations, and it is used to assess data quality and discover relationships between data points. To have a concrete idea of all these advantages, let's look at some examples at first. Example 1 is a PCA plot of gene expansion data from patient tumor cells of different subtypes. Each dot is the gene expansion status of a tumor cell from a patient and is colored by its subtype. The three axes are the first three principal components and the numbers within the parentheses suggest the percentage of variance that are captured by each component. You can see that the first component, the PC1, captured the most variance of 54%. The second and the third capture only very small, 8% and 5%. In this figure, dots of the same subtype tend to cluster together, which means tumor cells of the same subtype have similar transcription profiles. The other thing can be interpreted from this figure is that a subtype 1 and a subtype 2 are more similar to each other than to subtype 3 because the difference between subtype 1 and subtype 2 is mainly on the second component that captures only 8% variance while the difference between subtype 3 with all the other two is on the first component which captures the 54% variance so the distance of the dots on each axis should not be treated equally. Difference on the first component should be taken into more consideration. Example 2 is simulated gene expression data by random numbers, mimicking the first example. I put this figure here to show how a random data set would be look like in a PCA plot. One outstanding feature is that dots of different classes mix all together. The other feature is that the first three principal components capture almost equal and, and a small variance. If the gene expression data we got from tumor cells looks like example two, we can see gene expression profiles of different subtypes are not distinct from each other. Our, our subtype has no influence on tumor cell transcriptome. Here are two more examples. Example 3 is gene expression data from drug-treated cells. Brown dots are untreated cells. Pink dots are 48-hour treated cells. And blue dots are 72-hour treated cells. Dots of the same color are biological replicates of the same treatment. From the figure, we can see there is a major difference between treated cells and untreated cells. There are very small differences between treated cells of different time points because the, the difference between the, the, the cells of different time points are mainly on the second and the third components which capture very small variance. Another thing we can observe is that untreated replicates pack up tightly but replicates of treated cells tend to scatter. This reflects that the transcriptome of treated cells has larger variance. Example 4 is also gene expression data from drug-treated cells. There are four biological replicates for drug-treated cells mirrored on four different microarray plates. Each place has about 20 control replicates. Pink, blue, brown, and red dots are the control replicates on plate 1 to 4. Light yellow dots are replicates of drug-treated cells on four plates. From the figure, 
we can see control dots from same plate cluster together. This is certainly a technical artifact and makes no biological sense. This data set should be renormalized or processed individually by plate in further analysis. I will use micro gene expansion data as an example to make a PCA plot in my lab. The gene expansion data is usually stored in a tabs delimited text file, and the extension of such files could be .csv, .soft, .xls, and etc. Use Excel or Sublime Text to open and preview the file. Gene expression values must be normalized before PCA plotting. OK, we will do the demo now. Now, we will begin our PCA plotting in MATLAB. First, import the data from a CSV file. Click Import Data button. Select the CSV file. Wait for loading. We first import all the numeric values as a matrix. We select matrix and a given name as expressions. Then click Import. The next step, we import the column labels. We give the name as subtypes, and we import them as a cell array. And the data type should be text. And then click Import. Now, in our workspace, we have two variables, expressions and subtypes. You can double click to browse the expressions. Expression is a 55 by 56 matrix, so it has 56 gene expression profiles of 55 genes. Double-click subtypes to browse it. There are 56 subtype labels matching 56 columns of the matrix. There are three subtypes in this dataset, subtype 1, 2, and 3. After got all the data, we will begin our plotting. First, I open this script I wrote to do the whole thing. I will explain it line by line. The first step is to perform principal component analysis. There is a single function called printComp in MATLAB that will do the job. I have copied this command here. The apostrophe on the expressions means transpose. I needed to transpose the expression matrix because in its design, the printComp function requires the rows of input matrix are observations and columns are variables, which means rows to be gene expression profiles and columns to be the genes. There are three outputs of this function. The first output is coefficient matrix, which we won't use here, and is substituted with a TOD. In my lab, you always put a TOD for unused output. The second output is scores which are the transformed coordinates by PCA. The third output, PCA walls, stores how much variance each component captures. If a function has multiple output, MATLAB requires to put a square brackets around them. Press Enter to run the command. Let's first look at PCA walls. You can see the values are in descending order, so the first several components capture most variance of the data. Since we will plot our data in three dimensions, we will only use the first three components. For the scores matrix, it has the same arrangement as the expression matrix, which are rows like gene expansion profiles and columns are genes. We will pick the first three columns, namely the first three components. I will let the first component to be the x-axis and the second to be the y-axis and the third to be the z-axis. The syntax here means that select the specified column of the scores matrix. We select one, two, three column. Now we got the x, y, z coordinates. The next step is to plot them. I use this gscatter3 function. It is not a MATLAB built-in. I download it from the file exchange. File exchange is the official MATLAB forum run by MathWork, where MATLAB users share their code. You can download this function from this URL or search Google for its name. 
The first three arguments of the function is XYZ coordinates. The fourth argument is so-called group variable. Here it is the subtypes variable, which for each data point specify their group. We have three groups here, subtypes 1, 2, 3. The next argument specifies color for each group. We have three groups, so this specifies three colors. The color here is represented by single characters wrapped in a cell array. The curly brackets indicate it is a cell array. MATLAB recognizes eight colors by a single character name. Here, B is for blue, G is for green, and M is for magenta. The following argument specifies the marker type for each group. Since we want the marker of all groups to be filled circles, we put three dots here. In MATLAB, dots means filled circles in plotting. Then, the final argument gives the size of our marker. I choose 15 here. For detailed usage of this function, open it in a text editor to see the documentation. Press enter, we got our figure. The next step is to put some annotations. Use title function to add a title to the figure. Just put the name of the title as a string in the function. Here I will give the name as gene expressions of cancer subtypes. Now let's look at the figure. You can see it has a title. The next step is to annotate the axis. Recall PC walls variable stores variance for each component. To calculate the percentage of the variance, the first component captured, we divide first component variance by total variance which is the sum of variance of all components and then multiply by 100. Press enter we got this number. We do not want to have such precision so we run this number to 54 using the round function. Then we convert this number into string using num to str function. Then we will concatenate this number string with other annotation parts which are string literals using square brackets. Then use x label function to add this annotation to the figure. Look at the figure again. We see we have this annotation on x axis. Oh, I made a mistake here. The it should be pc1. I only type pc here. Never mind. If you put all the previous steps in one line, it will be like this. We first get the variance of the first component divided by the total variance and then multiply by 100 and use the run function to get an integer and use a num to str to change it to string and concatenate with other string literals in the annotations. We will repeat this step for y axis and z axis. Okay, we finished our figure. Want to change the orientation of the figure? Click this button. You can rotate this box all around. After placing the figure in a proper orientation, export the figure into different formats. Click export. I usually export it as EPS, so we select EPS format and give the name as a PCA cancer subtypes. One last thing. Most of the time you may want to z-score normalization on your xyz coordinates so they fall into the same scale. To do this, use the z-score function before plotting. Let's replot the figure. I copy the to I copy the whole code and uh, paste it here. Now the axis of normalized figure are all in the range of minus two to positive two, so they are in the same range. Okay, we finished our PCA plotting method today. Hope you enjoy.